Well, I want to thank you all uh, for coming out. I'm announcing today that we're in the process. We do not have the stamped copies yet. We will be handing out unstamped copies, but uh, we should have the stamped copies shortly. But uh, today I'm filing suit against the Biden administration, specifically uh, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, uh, regarding their new rule that they have floated uh, that would uh, drastically uh, change uh, the law as it relates to gun shows. It, it is a, an administrative attempt to do what uh, they could not get through the Congress, what the administration could get through the Congress, and um, they do not have the power to do this unilaterally via fiat. And uh, so on that legal basis, uh, we are challenging it. We're also challenging it, as we often do with, with regulations uh, where they are arbitrary and capricious. We are challenging it on that basis as well. But the fundamental point is, in a number of areas, the Biden administration has sought uh, to change policy in areas, whether it be student loans, on the environment, higher education, you name it, they have uh, tried or are in the process of trying to change policy uh, outside of Congress through the regulatory process where they need to be going through Congress. On many items, uh, in many areas, they have to go through Congress to change the law. And I know that they're doing this because they've been unable to change it through Congress. Uh, they're frustrated, I get it, but their frustration, their political inability to get what they want through the Congress does not change our constitutional structure. Uh, they still need to go through the Congress to change the, um, the law currently on the books. So let me talk a little bit about what this change does and um, the basis for our challenge is a legal one, but I want to talk a little bit about the policy uh, that is at issue here. So for years we have had a statute on the books that, and you've heard uh, obviously of the gun show uh, loophole and uh, the Firearm Owners Protection Act from 1985, sort of the foundational law. And it, um, it has a standard for those who need to have a federal firearm license and those who don't. And hobbyists, collectors, etc., historically have been able to uh, buy and sell at gun shows without having to go through the arduous process of becoming a federal firearm dealer. That is statutory language. That is the law, not merely uh, a regulation. And the standard prior to, prior to uh, this rule has been that if you are making repetitive purchases and resale of firearms, that you may be considered a federal firearms dealer. Now, repetitive meant more than one. What it meant? Well, that's always been an issue because it's not clearly defined in the statute. There is some discretion there, and I'll say a few words about that in a minute. So, the law has never been perfectly clear as to where, bless you, perfectly clear as to where the ATF uh, will draw the line and say, okay, now, because of this number of transactions, you, we consider you someone who needs a federal firearm license. That has not been abundantly clear. That is the statutory language. This proposed rule does not help clarify anything, putting aside the fact uh, for a second that it is illegal. So let me show you this is the rule. The rule is about two or three times the length 
of our lawsuit. This is our lawsuit, and this is the rule. Now, common sense tells you from the get-go, the rule violates the general principle that those of us who live under the rules and the laws and the regulations need to be able to understand the rules and the laws that we live under. If you look at this, it's over 100 pages. I think it's 126 pages discussing what the new rule is. Setting aside for a second the fact that it is illegal to make this the rule without going through Congress, let me talk about what this does. It does nothing to eliminate confusion, except on one point. Now, it indicates that even one cell, one cell of a firearm could constitute, uh, could, 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 could indicate that you need to be a federally licensed firearm dealer if it is for a profit. Well, why else would you sell something if not for a profit? That's common sense. But the point is, it still leaves a vast amount of discretion with the ATF, not giving those of us who live under the law guidance as to specifically what it means. So to, to recap, it's illegal because this sort of change in the law should have to go through the Congress. And the fact that you can't get it through Congress does not change the constitutional mandate that you follow the process. Now, I want to say something that it, about an issue that is not specifically and technically uh, the subject of this lawsuit, but relates generally to this issue. And that is the one of Mr. Malinowski, whose home was recently raided uh, by the ATF. And Mr. Malinowski was killed. Uh, we don't have all the facts. We have limited facts. But what we can glean from press reports and what has been made publicly available as, is that Mr. Malinowski uh, was a uh, frequent um, attendee of gun shows and collected firearms, which is not illegal. And for um, whatever reason, the ATF believed that he had somehow met the nebulous, somewhat subjective standard as to what constitutes firearm, a federal firearm dealer, uh, and what doesn't, and, and we know uh, what happened after that with the raid and ultimately his death. I mention that because there was confusion and a lack of clarity as to where the line is before and this, this doesn't help. There's still a lack of clarity. And look, if you're going to be put in that situation based on your conduct, there's a heightened obligation on the government to provide guidance as to what they're talking about. And that should be done through the Congress. So this suit uh, is being filed right now uh, we are there's a total of 21 states in our coalition the list of states are in the press release that we'll be sending out uh, I am co-leading this effort with uh, uh, General Kobach uh, in Kansas one thing I want to mention is uh, the firearm law that has been on the books since the 80s that allows for collectors, uh, that allows for hobbyists uh, to make these kind of transactions. The, um, the Senator Joe Biden 
many years ago, praised the law that has been on the books by uh, saying, quote, it's a balanced piece of legislation that protects the rights of private gun owners, end quote. So, the bottom line is, we have a law. It's not as clear as it should be. If you want to change the law, there are ways to do that. We learned that in um, Schoolhouse Rock. We learned the path of a bill and how to change the law. And what we've got today and the reason for this suit is the Biden administration continues on issue after issue, topic after topic, to ignore the fundamental elementary school taught constitutional process for changing the law and instead are through fiat, administrative fiat, trying to change it in an election year uh, for what to, to do something they could not otherwise do. Happy to take some questions. Yes, sir. Hey, yeah, Mirror Moon with the Arkansas Democrat Your Dad. Um, so you mentioned the lack of clarity uh, as it pertains to the gun show loophole. Um, so do you believe that that is an issue? And if so, how do you think is the proper way to address that? Well, the legal foundation, so we've got two issues here, right? We've got the law and we've got policy. My role as the chief uh, legal officer for the state of Arkansas is to file suits based on the law. Uh, the policy discussion can be had in the Congress where it belongs. Uh, the foundation of the suit is the illegality of the action. And that is, that is the focus. Uh, the point of that was we've had confusion as to where the line is. And you see that manifesting itself, I believe. Again, we don't have all the facts. I was uh, one of the first to call for the ATF to, to put the body cameras out. I think, look, there's no bigger supporter of law enforcement than, than I am. And there's no bigger supporter of the Second Amendment. But putting those aside, it is an obligation of all of us, not just the press, not just attorneys for victims, but all of us, not just elected officials. When our government does something that exceeds its authority, doesn't look right, doesn't make sense, at a minimum, doesn't provide all the facts, we have an obligation to ask that they do that. In this particular case, we discuss it at a disadvantage because none of us have all of the facts. At least I don't because I have not, I was not involved in that, uh, in that raid. And, and uh, I know that the uh, prosecuting attorney here has uh, some of those facts. But there are a lot of facts that we still need to give, restore confidence to the public. And sometimes when people screw up, they just need to say it. They need to say it, and they need to demonstrate what they're going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. Now, that's not the basis of this suit. I mention that because it is context. It is context to this suit. And note that that raid occurred before this change. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, this pertains to the Jefferson County judge. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Just wanted to hear your thoughts about him you know, not paying yeah. employees for the county. Well, uh, here's what I'd say to that. Uh, I've got a lot of calls about that. I'm talking to a lot of other uh, government officials about that. I'm tracking the situation closely. And uh, obviously, if uh, people ought to be paid when they work uh, and uh, for their work. But in terms of the details, I can't say anything else. Uh, at this time, but I'm I'm following that very closely. Yes, sir. Do you believe if Mr. Malinowski was noted as someone who was selling guns in the federally uh, like database, that the outcome of the raid may have changed? I don't know enough facts about that uh, situation, and that's that's part of the problem. Uh, we don't know the facts, and I'll, but I do know that my my good friend, um, uh, prosecuting attorney Will Jones, has the case and uh, at least part of the case in terms of the way some of that uh, was, was handled. 
and he is looking at that. I really can't say anything else at this point except to say the law has a lot of discretion in it. Um, the new rule, in addition to being illegal, is still not clear. Um, but we're challenging it to be clear, not on the fact that it's 126 pages. We're not challenging it simply because it's poorly written. We're challenging it because it's illegal. And if you want to make changes to our laws, you got to just follow the simple process that we all should have learned uh, in the schoolhouse rock that they showed me in the 1970s. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was going to ask you, do you think they should do away with no not one? Well, that's a separate discussion. Uh, let's let this investigation finish. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure that, I, again, I've seen the video that you've probably seen, um, and uh, I think there's a place for those. I don't think that's the issue here. So I don't think we ought to get rid of that. But I don't, from what I've seen and what I've learned, there are a lot of different issues in a lot of different ways this could have been handled differently that have nothing to do with that. So, but I'm not forgetting rid of those. Yes, sir. So I believe the Biden administration has used um, sort of the, I think it's called the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act sort of as a basis for this rule, um, at least according to their website. Can you speak to that at all? Because uh, I know that is legislation that did go through Congress. Um, yeah, well, you know, they've tried this with, with student loans and lost. Uh, they've tried, they're trying this with, just pick your topic. Uh, of course, they're always going to say, well, you know, we thought about this and, you know, there's a law that uh, we're going to cite. It doesn't mean it's legal. Uh, I think we make a really strong case that this is not even close to legal. Uh, if you'll remember with their student loan forgiveness, the first attempt, okay, they've had a uh, first attempt, a second attempt, a third attempt, which is related to the second attempt. We're challenging the second attempt right now in federal court. On the first attempt, they cited uh, federal legislation that had nothing to do with student loans. They made a tenuous connection saying, well, this is the foundation. The Supreme Court rejected it. We won that suit, and we were leaders on that on that suit. Uh, so, look, I don't th I don't think this is a close call. I think that this is a combination of uh, election year politics. I think it's a combination of frustration, not getting what you want through Congress, and so we'll do it another way. I think it involves uh, catering to people in his uh, base who are demanding it. None of those issues exempt you, the president, the administration, from the fundamentals of the Constitution. So, thank y'all. Anything else? Yep. Thank y'all so much. Appreciate it.